Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward. We are broadcasting from Ventura, California. But not quite a full house. <laughs> we were we have three empty seats. There you go. You can see them all right there. Dan at the controls. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Doing great. How are you? Good. Good, good. We got Gabe's back. Yep. All right. And our guest today, Steve Goldfield. Now, I'm trying to figure out the best way to introduce you. So you <laughs> dabbled in a little bit of everything, which is great because we're going to get to hear these great stories. But you've done some some movies, movie production, uh, rallies. Uh, you found lots of rallies. Lots of rallies. Lots of rallies. Uh, yeah. Cars and coffee. But more than anything else, you got petroleum going through your veins. So we know you're a full-blown car guy. Uh, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, what did you drive here today? Uh, 812 Superfast Ferrari. Man, it sounded so good as he was pulling yeah. up. And, the, and the, what was the yeah. color again? Sorry. Oh, the color, Rosso Fiorano. It's a dark red. It's not burgundy, even though sometimes people... It's beautiful color. It is. And you got the big gold rims on there. Beautiful. Yeah. Nice combination. Is that gold or bronze? They're no, bronze. No, no. bronze. Is it bronze? But okay. I didn't want to correct them. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't correct the host. No, no not no, at all. No, 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 yeah. well, it's that. a beautiful car. And thank, thank you, you for joining us today. Sure. Yeah. We have a lot of great stories. We know that. We was kind of previewing here before we started recording. Yeah. So we're like, okay, we got to remember, we got to ask about this, got to ask about that. Um, so well, people, since we touched on it, you did some movie production. Tell us about some of the movies that you've done. Nothing major. I mean, it was um, investment and then some help, you know, getting everything going on movies like uh, Vigilante Diaries and, um, but which didn't make it too big. So the movies I've done were fun. I've traveled all over the world trying to put these things on, but, uh, uh didn't make me a hell of a lot of money. So I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not. <laughs> well, I Googled it and I saw one had a Ferrari on the, on the cover. Is oh, it? Oh, that, oh yeah, that, that's. Which one is that? Uh, Let's see, Fierce Target. Fierce Target. Fierce that's Target, that's right, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that was... Uh, yeah, I was thinking, oh, he's got some good taste in putting that on the that cover. That was my 430 yeah. Ferrari. Was it? Okay. Yeah, yeah they're all mine, yeah. So that was yours. That was mine. All right. Yeah. And uh, so, okay, so you've done, you've done some movies. Um, Zuma, Cars and Coffee? You Z started that? Okay, that's a whole... This That's one, a whole story. So this will take a half hour alone, right? Well, I can, I'll, I'll do the abridged version. <laughs> okay. Right right. Like 20 minutes, 15 minutes. So when did you start it? Okay. So it's how I started it. Um, the um, During COVID, we put on, I just said I put on a Cars and Coffee. A friend of mine had the uh, Calamigos Beach Club in Malibu. And it's a restaurant. And so uh, we got a few cars there. We got you know, maybe 50, 60 cars there during COVID. It was a place to go because we none of us wanted to be incapacitated or sit at home. Uh, There's no way that that was going to stop us from living. Uh, so we put that on. And after about – and they're very successful, beautiful, right across from the ocean. And then the city of Malibu said, you can't do it. And that was the end of that one. Then there We've was, heard that a few times. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, then, then there was a Civic Center event that was not mine. It was, uh, it just happened. No one was putting it on. No one was in charge of it. It went on for a few years. Uh, and the city of Malibu didn't want it, but they had no way of stopping it since there was no one. In charge. No one in charge. <laughs> they no way find, to do it. After trying several things, they finally decided uh, make the parking lot there at Civic Center where Marmalade is, make it um, valet parking. <laughs> that was oh the end of it. Gosh. That was over. That was a brilliant move on the city of Malibu. That's who, how they got you guys. Exactly. Wow. wow. So I got pissed off. A car guy thought of that one. Something car, like that. Yeah, he's like, oh, oh here's, here's how you stop it. A car guy wouldn't want to stop that, though. You so don't think I don't so? think a car guy stopped it. But he had it. to have some kind of knowledge to know that if you put a valet up there. Somebody who's slick. Let's just say. Somebody who's slick. Okay. okay. It was a brilliant It was a brilliant move, but I got pissed off. This is how uh, Zuma started. So I had nowhere to go on a Sunday because for the last many, many years, I've been going, you know, I've enjoyed my cars and coffee, you know, going to those events, you know, having two, 300 cars there and friends. Um, so I drove up the coast. I saw Zuma Beach. I saw the first parking lot, and I go, holy crap, this would make a great Cars and Coffee. And people can't bug us because people pay like $10 to come in, and no, you know, no one cared about that. So a week later, I had 150 cars. We got the word out to friends. We've got 150 cars there, big success. Uh, the second month, we do these once a month, uh, and we call it Zuma Cars and Coffee because we're in Zuma Beach. Second month, we had over 300 cars there. <laughs> Very peaceful event. Yeah. And we had cars coming from Orange County. I had Pagani's, um, 
had Conan Segs, if you've ever seen oh, these. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. La Ferraris wow. and uh, lots of Ferraris and Lambos and all the exotic So they cars. could afford the $10 entry fee to get into the parking lot. Barely, yeah, but okay. they did. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so we did that for two months. Um, and, of course, I get an um, a email notice from the county parks and beaches. Uh, you can't put on car shows there. Great. So it was. How did they find you though? I mean, if, was it set up as if Instagram? Oh, okay. uh, Zoom at cars and coffee. Uh, too much evidence out there. No, I, I don't hide from anyone, so <laughs> it, it's known. Um, at any rate, so they found me, and but I couldn't stop it because it was already people were already used to it and it was already promoted. So I let them know. I said, "Well, it's going to probably happen next time, but I'm not promoting it." Right. So went there next time. Uh, and uh, there's video of this. you got to see it. We get in there. They had five goons, county goons, at the, the entrance there to the parking lot where you pay to get in. Wouldn't let any of us in because we, our cars were too nice. And they said, you can't come in. Wow. Seriously? Seriously. And I've never heard discrimination of Discrimination against oh, we are, wow. car owners. We are more discriminated than anything you can figure across the U.S. We are the discriminated group. Wow. The car people. Wow. At any rate, so then I, I had, I think pro there were probably behind me, I think there were 100 or 200 exotic cars waiting to get in, following me in. <laughs> <laughs> it's, on, it's on our Instagram. <laughs> okay, so um, then we went down to the Ralph's Market and hung out there for a while, and that was the end of Zuma. So not to give up, um, I had to find another place. So I found Aviator Nation Dreamland in Malibu. Beautiful little restaurant like a clubhouse, very 60s with a stage, and it was couches. Uh, they served breakfast and lunch and dinner, and uh, right across from the pier in Malibu, we had 150, maybe almost 200 cars come. Part of them were parking at Malibu, you know, the at the pier. Um, well, this one here, the city of Malibu had ordered six or seven sheriff's cars to harass us. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong. It's Jeez. not the sheriff's fault because they love us yeah. and we love them. We've always supported them. They've supported us. It's the city of Malibu tells the sheriff because they pretty much hire, hire them what yeah. to do. Yeah. So our people are getting front license plate tickets, things you wouldn't believe because we're a peaceful group. And again, there's video on this on our Instagram <laughs> of the police out in front pulling over cars. You know, one guy, GT40, pulls out. Instantly, a cop just pulls out, leaving our event. Cop pulls him over, gives him, uh, not only did he not have a front license plate, but his rear license plate had a little happy face on it. So with a happy face, that was uh, desecrating a license plate. Oh so God. he ended up with a moving violation and an $800 ticket. Oh, oh man. Oh, it, was, it was awful. So that was the end of Malibu, even though we were Zuma Cars and Coffee. I then found <laughs> Killer Shrimp in Marina Del Rey, and I knew they'd put on car events. All right, so I talked to the people there. I said, we need a home, and said, yeah, come on down. We met them. Room for you know, 300 cars on their lot. Beautiful. So they said, yeah, let's start it. And so we started. We've been there almost a year and a half. Beautiful location, great restaurant, right at Marina Del Rey, very upscale, no issues. And we had the whole parking lot on once a month on Sunday morning. Okay. Now... We're still Zuma Cars and Coffee in Marina Del Rey. <laughs> now, I, I wrote, and we actually have a piece on our site, website, and whatever that's called. Why, um, why are we called Zuma Cars and Coffee if we're in Marina Del Rey? Yeah, you know, we were killer shrimp. Okay, so <laughs> well, I ended up saying we couldn't very well call it Zuma Cars and Shrimp. Okay. <laughs> All right. So now, uh, going everything wonderful. We were about to put on our uh, Senko de Mayo event, actually on Senko de Mayo. Um, had these you know, wonderful PR. I had um, four mariachis to come out, and they were going to surprise people and serenade the cars as they came in. <laughs> nice. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then um, it, it was going to be, and, you know, had our sombreros and our outfits, and it was, uh, it was actually pretty good. Cool. Oh, and I had like five lowriders coming. One of the lowriders was um, Snoop Dogg rode that lowrider in the Super Bowl halftime. Oh, okay. That's one of them. Oh, so these are okay. like the top end. These, these are very cool people. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to do, it was going to be quite an event, and it disappointed everyone when the county, oh, the county shut, told Killer Shrimp they couldn't have any more car events because another Cars and Coffee event that was happening uh, the same day a month before had a McLaren, some idiot in a McLaren, pulls out 
just a show off, smashes into the center divider on PCH and then pours over and smashes into three cars. And there's like a couple hundred people, paparazzi and out there. And this is uh, on video and that got the attention of the county. And so because of that, it was the county parks and beaches. Okay, because, because of that, they got a hold of Killer Shrimp, which we had nothing to do with it, and said you can't hold any more car events. Because of a crash a month before. That had nothing the to same, do with it. It was the guys. same same day as okay. ours was okay. on. Ours was in Marina. Theirs was in Pacific Still, Palisades. Yeah. So without mentioning names of the event. But that was the end of their event. They no longer hold any cars and coffee events. Right. So we were technically, uh, except for I think one in uh, Griffith Park, the only L.A. proper cars and coffee event existing. And there may be a couple of small ones around. So now I'm stuck with the problem of having a large following and nowhere to go. Hmm. And uh, I kept fighting and found, of all places, Redondo Beach. Someone told me about it. I went down there. I'm thinking, well, it's too far. Well, in reality, it was only like 10 minutes away from Killer Shrimp and Marina. I go down there and I see this big, beautiful place. And one fellow owns three restaurants there in this giant parking lot that wants us there. And he's also on the board, the commission. And I can, I mean, there's room for easy 500 cars. And it's on the ocean. Wow. And it's beautiful. And there are restaurants. And there's a pier next door. And there's things to do. And there's boating. And it's a whole recreational thing. Um, they wanted us there. Um, got the, uh, the city to back us. And so the city, everyone wants us there. There's no issues with not being there. So our first one is going to be this coming Sunday. Now, as you told me, this is not going to air until after our event. Yeah, so right. uh, sorry, everyone, if you, <laughs> if you but, guys but, missed it. So, But if you don't get kicked out of there, you plan on holding it once a month. Oh, yeah. Okay. And we shouldn't get kicked. There's no reason. I mean, our, our group is as large as, as it is. It's a very peaceful group, very respectable, and great cars that you wouldn't believe. So, uh, And everyone's invited. So it'll be once a month. It'll be on the first Sunday of every month. So you don't think you're going to end up in Laguna? At some point. <laughs> no, no, but we're now Zuma, <laughs> Zuma, Zuma and cars, Tijuana. <laughs> yeah. Zuma Cars and Coffee is now in Redondo Beach. There you go. Okay. And someone made a comment, pretty soon it'll be in Tijuana. So, <laughs> uh, there's the Zuma story. Yeah. Wow. Well, tell us about some of the rallies because okay. you, it sounds like you've been in, involved in some great rallies. Yes. Oh, one other thing on Zuma. Uh, during all this, when we didn't have a place, we have the Zuma riots. Okay, and this was um, downtown. Uh, I have video if you guys want to show you the Zuma riots. <laughs> so we're there and we've got about 100 uh, people behind me, and we're in Skid Row downtown. Uh, we've got the Zuma hat on like that, and the, the whole group behind me is going, Zuma, Zuma, Zuma. <laughs> and then they swerve around on the other side, and you have all the police there in riot gear and the mounted police and the helicopters and all this around for the Zuma riots downtown at um, Skid Row. And this is like, um, I think it was the night before they went in to clear out uh, the... Um, the camps. The, the camp, you know, yeah. no, no, the uh, protests that were going on at, at SC, oh, USC. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, and in reality, this was just... We were helping the police department. Okay. They were practicing. We're throwing things at them. They're shooting less than lethal at us. <laughs> uh, and they put a car on fire, and it's in a worse part of L.A. that you can imagine. And it was a lot of fun. So at any rate, those were the <laughs> Zuma riots. I took advantage of it. And if you look at it, I, I have people calling me say, Steve, you're an idiot. You're, you're, what are you doing to the LAPD? And they, thinking it was real. real yeah. They thought the riots were real. So, anyway. so even the riots don't happen in Zuma. No, we don't get riots at Zuma. No, but, we, <laughs> but we have a, we are a little bit different than others because we always try to make it fun and surprise people and sure. do a bunch of weird crap. Well, you were saying before. You no, know, you, know, you it sounds like you have a passion for rallies too. Talk about some of the rallies that you participated in and how much fun they are and craziness that happens. Okay, well, um, I don't know where to start. I mean, I, what, was, I, what was, was the, the first one? You yeah, what was the first rally? Yeah, in? first one probably was Gold Rush Rally, which was absolutely great, and I was started. Um, on that one, usually have about a hundred cars. Um, and one of the fun things about it was pranking people. So I introduced pranking in there and we did some weird, <laughs> weird stuff on the rally, on the rally. And we go usually across the U S to start in LA and end up in Florida or somewhere. It could be New York or Chicago or start different places and great group of people there. 
I mean, that's it's a good rally. Um, but I can think of some of the pranking. Um, I got a friend of mine in Malibu pulled over. This is during the rally, pulled over by a L.A. County Sheriff uh, while we were in Malibu, we were going slow, and he was actually in his roles. So we got pulled over, and the cop, uh, you know, with lights and sirens, goes over, starts harassing him about how fast he's going, even though he's just creeping. <laughs> I mean, really giving him a bunch of crap. And then I, I'm in the Ferrari in front, and I get out of the Ferrari, and I've got my iPhone, and I'm taking the video, coming closer and closer. <laughs> oh, they He's love getting that. pissed off yeah. at me. He's getting, no, the driver, he's getting pissed off like I'm going to get the cop mad. Oh, okay. So I, I get up closer and closer, and then finally the cop takes off his helmet and it shows my friend that it happened to be a good friend of mine, the cop, who was my co-pilot on Gumball Rally the year before. Uh, and, and I had it all set up to harass Scott. That is funny. Oh, yeah. So we did that. So he got back at me uh, <laughs> on that. Uh, on the, there, we got to Vegas, and then they had a thing where they were going to ship the cars to Texas and put us on a, uh, a Southwest jet to go to Texas to pick up our cars. So we're there, and all of a sudden I hear um, – we're in, in the air, and um, passenger Steve Goldfield, please identify where you are. So, um, I'm, yeah, here. And all of a sudden, happy birthday, Steve Goldfield. Happy 85th birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you can imagine the rest of the rally went to hell. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, and every, everyone on the plane starts singing happy birthday to me. So, That's funny. And Pete comments I'm getting afterwards, oh, he looks really good for 85. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, they're... But then we did the rally again, uh, Gold Rush again the next year, um, and I even put together a little video to mess with people, a Family Guy video with Stewie narrowing it, and, and we had our friends written or, you know, looking like Family Guy characters at any rate. Okay. Um, the, uh, what, what did we, okay, so we're doing the thing, the plane thing again, and this time I was prepared. Okay, so I'm waiting, and of course they did happy 86th birthday, and this time it's Okay. <laughs> Okay, a little while later, I went to the flight attendant and I said, you see the, the two couple, the couple there? They're getting married. It was a surprise. And they're getting married at the end of the rally. And, and please, you know, announce something. <laughs> and so I, I gave all the participants on Gold Rush, I actually had professionally made wedding invitations <laughs> with the ribbon and I mean, spent oh, a lot of money on good. it. Handed it to all the participants. Uh, and, and they had no idea that it was happening. So then I go over and stand there, and all, all of a sudden the flight attendant, you know, announces their names. I'm going to withhold the names. <laughs> uh, and congratulations on getting married and having your ceremony at the final party for Gold Rush. And Stunned. everyone's applauding them. And I and I throw the invitation on like that. It, it was absolutely you great. Know, it shocked the hell out oh of me. Before the show started... Uh, we were asking you questions about the the rallies and stuff, and the first thing you said was they're really expensive. Is it expensive because of all the money you're spending on the pranks? Pranks, yeah. <laughs> well, oh no, no. When I get to Gumball, you'll see. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. I mean, Gold Rush isn't that expensive. It's a decent price. Sure. Gold, gold, it's a it's a good. Oh one, wait, but... you know what we should do is uh, context for our, our listeners who don't know what a rally is. I was just going to oh, ask the oh, same yeah. thing. Yeah. I know what a rally is, but I mean, yeah. I think a lot of people yeah, don't so know what could, a rally Steve, is. Could you though. explain what the rallies typically are? Bottom line, a rally is a party on wheels for a thousand to three thousand miles with exotic cars. That's what it is. Sounds it's cool. Yeah. Good explanation. I like yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. It's not a like race, yeah. even though a lot of cars will go very fast, but a lot of people go normal speed. It's just a party, and it's some of the greatest parties you can ever imagine. Wow. <laughs> but, um, we have to go do one. <laughs> we need an exotic yeah. car. Yeah, we need an exotic car. Yeah. Well, oh, so that, that was an example of uh, Gold Rush, which is, uh, you know, to this day, is you know, doing great. They have other things they put on the fuel run, you know, fuel run and... Pretty cool. Cars on Broadway up in Monterey and stuff. So it's a very cool play, mm. thing to do. What's your favorite one? Um, that well, I put on my own rally, but I guess we can get to that afterwards. No, no. Go ahead and tell us about your rally. Mine or Gumball? Mine? Yeah. That's, okay. I mean, obviously, if you started your own rally. Oh, so, okay. So, I'll ask you later about what your favorite one is. Oh, is that your own? <laughs> okay. I guess I got a lot to say, don't yeah, I? Yeah, you do. That's, uh, that's why we're giving you as much time as you need. Good. After we have this thing done, I can just play it for people and I can shut <laughs> there up. You there, <laughs> there you go. There you go. Yep. Okay, so um, from uh, Gold Rush, and this is years ago, um, from uh, 15, 14, or 15, I think it's 2014 probably is the last time I did Gold Rush um, and decided to put on 
my own rally. So I'm one thing I wanted to do, I wanted to have a rally that was different. Uh, in fact, you'll appreciate this being Tulsa. Okay. This is right in your neck of the woods. So I wanted to put on a rally that was different. And instead of just where all the rallies go to the major cities, Miami or Florida, London or whatever, I wanted something to go through the Midwest. Right in the heartland, right? I wanted that. And I yeah. wanted, and I was going, okay, so we can go through Iowa, Oklahoma, you know, maybe tie in with some of these groups, rock groups that are performing, older rock groups that are performing at clubs and ending up there at night and just doing something. And I was, you know, jokingly call it the Podunk Rally. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Podunk. Yeah. yeah okay. Right, yeah. That was the original name. Okay. Okay. So um, that was the idea. And it would have, been very successful as that because it was different. It, it's, you know, here's when you go into town, a, a town where the best cars that people there have seen are maybe a three-year-old Corvette. And now all of a sudden we come in with the Lambos and the Ferraris and the Bugattis and whatever. And, um, and it just, and the mayor hands me a key to the city, hopefully, <laughs> who knows? <laughs> I've never had a key to the city. I don't know if I deserve it. <laughs> At any rate, so that was the idea. Then you know, called a couple of my friends, say, let's, you know, put this on. It's only the idea. And it then ended up, um, let's make it more of a luxury rally. Well, that's where it started. I looked for a name, since we're not going to use the name Podunk, and I found that the name Cannonball Run was available. <laughs> no one had it. No one owned the trademark. Wow. Oh, what wow. a surprise. Wow. Next thing you know, we are the Cannonball Run. Wow. Okay. Not the same. I mean, we are the official cannonball, the legal one with all the rights and everything to it. Mm -hmm. But the one that's put on, it was lost years ago because the person that had it was putting on, it was considered an illegal event since it was a race. So we had to abandon it and abandon the trademark. Well, the trademark was available. So we got it. Wow. All right. Uh, okay. So now we've got the cannonball run. What are we going to do? Well, to make this story short, um, we start, made it a five-star type rally, um, started in Massachusetts. I even forget the name of the small town, but it was beautiful. So we took over the town in Massachusetts. Uh, we weren't that well known yet. So uh, one of my partners on this suggested, well, if people don't know you and, you know, you want crowds there, you have to go to where the crowds are. And then it looks like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it, uh, very clever people. It is, yeah. Okay, so we started there, and then we went through various five-star hotels while the leaves were changing. It was, I think it was October or so uh, during Great 15, time of year to be up there. Yeah. It was beautiful. And stopped at, uh, you know, the racetrack, um, Road America, I think it was, one of those racetracks. Um, the, let's see, in different hotels. I forget the one that there's one that's in North Carolina that they had the old white house underground. Hmm. Or not just the white house, but the Congress it's for, it was for a nuclear war. It was built. For oh, that. wow. Okay. Oh. Yeah. A bunker. It was oh, a real bunker. A bunker. We yeah. no, I mean, that was it stopped there. And then we're, you know, making our way down, you know, five days, we finally get to, um, Key West. I uh, arranged for now Key West is long, like 70, 80, whatever miles to get to the end. So I got a police escort there. I hired the police department, and they gave us an escort. So we were able to go a little faster. We get to the end, um, and we're on Duval Street. And this is right before um, their huge event, um, Something Fest. And we're coming down Duval Street, tons of people. So we went where the crowds are. And they, the police had it all blocked off for us anyway. And here we go with the cars. And, and we get to the end to where our hotel is. And again, I, this is where we really start messing with people. Um, we, our final destination was going to be Cuba, Havana, Cuba. Okay. Now, do the participants know this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They knew oh, that. Oh, yeah. Okay, no, they, they knew. Okay. They're all nervous okay, about it. Okay. It gets better. <laughs> okay. So uh, at the end, I wanted to get the Tropicana. Some girls dressed up like the Tropicana, you know, with all the, the hoopla on their hair. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I couldn't find any there. So uh, I did manage to find four drag queens that dressed up <laughs> and all that at the end of the – and so they're there congratulating us at the end of the rally. No one expected wow. that. Uh, so this is – so we had that <laughs> – all on video. Okay. Wow. So we did. And then we spent, you know, uh, next day uh, there in uh, some great hotel on a little island that was just, you know, uh, maybe a couple of blocks off the coast. Then the cars 
were then shipped back to wherever they came from. That was the end of the rally for the cars because we couldn't arrange for cars to go over to Havana. Instead, we hired two 737s, which were able to land on the um, uh, Key West Airport. Nothing, the airport's only so long, and it could take that. It couldn't take anything bigger, so we mm. needed the two planes. So we had that, and we had, had already been to Havana like four times arranging all this. Um, went to, uh, okay, so in the morning, everyone, you know, boarded. Uh, their cars were gone. They boarded the plane. All of them are nervous because they were going to Cuba. Castro was alive. It's a communist dictatorship. Mm -hmm. Holy crap. Uh, they, I mean, we're talking about scared people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thinking now, they're going to get there and never get out, right? It, that's yeah. the most peaceful place around. Havana was like a no-brainer at any rate. No crime there either, by the way. There's no crime in Cuba. You think so? Nobody dare, no. right? No, it's true. Yeah. But it's very friendly there. Even the police are friendly. Uh, the tourism is a big deal there for people other than the U.S. But we were lucky because there was a break to where we could bring people over to Cuba at that time, a government break. And so it was very lucky for us. And then we find out a week before leaving that we are going to be allowed to bring back all the Cuban rum and cigars we wanted. Mm. Wow. That was a big deal. Okay, so people are getting on the plane, um, and then I'm on uh, on plane one or two, whichever one it was, and before landing, I'm up there on the microphone announcing in a very solemn voice, like, okay, we're going to be landing in Havana soon, and it had to be very serious, too. When you get off the plane, you go straight to immigration. You show them your uh, passport and your visas, and once you clear get cleared through there, then you go pick up your luggage, and you go right out to the through the entrance of the airport, and it's going to be crowded, go straight to the pro, uh, to the parking lot, and you'll see the cannonball buses. And get out. They do, okay, all right, and everyone's like nervous as hell. Okay, so they get out. They go out the front of the airport and into the parking lot, and there are no buses. <laughs> and there are, <laughs> people are scattered. Freaking out. out. No. no buses at all. Um, that's part of the plan. Then all of a sudden, about five or 10 minutes later, I had 50 1950s cars with the cannonball logos on the windshield oh. drive by and pick up all the people. They had no idea this was going to cool happen. The cool Cuban, the oh, cool it, oh, Cuban oh, these, old cars. Way oh, cooler these, than a bus. Yeah, way cooler. Oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. Oh, these cars are amazing. But we had 50 of them for the participants, and so uh, they were being chauffeured around. And they're actually the cars for the weekend, for the two days we That's were there. That's fun. Yeah. Uh, so that was our uh, – and then we did various events and dinners and clubs and stuff in Havana, and that was um, – so we were the first uh, – probably the only rally that has ever gone to Cuba, even though we couldn't take the cars there, <laughs> which was a shame. That would have been nice, but um, – yeah. but that wow. was that rally. That's fun. So that, that's one of your favorites, obviously. I mean, well, yeah, because I put it on. It. Yeah, yeah. that's my idea. So, yeah. so how about your favorite that you didn't organize? Gumball. Is it? Gumball 3000. The 3000 stands for, it's a 3,000-mile drive. So if you're ready to put miles on your Ferrari, that's the rally. <laughs> no one cares. It's a, it's, a, uh, it's a celebrity event. It costs a lot of money, but it's worth it, and you're a rock star while you're doing it. And then when you get home, you're totally lame again. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, got, so it's nice. I get to spend a week being a rock star and then uh, come back to a normal nothing life. Whatever. Now, when you, say, when you say rock star, does that mean at certain stops along the way you guys are greeted like you're the Rolling Stones or something like that? Well, I'll give you an example, okay, would be uh, when we started, uh, one I did in 2000, I think it was 15, um, we started in Stockholm, Sweden. So I had a gold Rolls Royce. My Phantom drop head was um, customized by uh, West Coast Customs. Uh, Ryan just lives around the corner from me, so he did a whole thing and decked this thing out like you wouldn't believe. Gold wheels, gold everything. He just spent a week. Bling. This crew. Oh, you have no idea. Bling. You, you, it's beyond <laughs> anything. So uh, I had the car flown over to Stockholm uh, to get to the start line. Um, the day that it started, we were next to the King's residence. Um, the cars were all parked on the bridge there. There were at least 100,000 people on the street Whoa. just to see us. It, wow. Uh, yeah, these are big media events. This is like uh, th these kind of rallies. You won't see anywhere else. Maybe Mila Miglia or something, but to some degree. But this is just a whole different world. 
So we take off from there, and we're going through, and the crowds are like behind ropes and just going for blocks and blocks and blocks, crowds of people. Uh, and then we take off, and um, we were warned the day before. Um, I, mean, I mean, we do some stupid stuff on there. We were warned the day before uh, at the driver's meeting before that by the chief of police of Stockholm there about their DUI laws. <laughs> I got video of this too. Okay. You must have a heck of a video library. I do. You've got some I do. Okay. So the DUI laws. Um, well, first of all, in there at the start line, my co-pilot and I were dressed as, and this wasn't my idea. This is his idea. He's from Switzerland, he, he, Romanian, but he lives in Switzerland. We were dressed as Roman warriors, soldiers with whatever. <laughs> so we're dressed alike. In your gold chariot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Maybe that was the idea. He never explained that to me, <laughs> but we did that. All right, so um, so uh, the uh, chief police warned everyone that it's a... Um, the DUI laws, a point one or above is automatic jail. Zero tolerance. So if you had a martini, one martini the night before, and you're driving in the morning, you're pulled over, you may still go to jail. Just one martini. It's that bad. So it's like no tolerance at all. Wow. So again, uh, you know, the night before I was at the party and I had three martinis and I just, I mean, uh, you know, I fell through a table. That's a whole other story. And there's video of this too. Uh, <laughs> actually, the, not the table, but me drinking out of a, of a big bottle of champagne like this, <laughs> wherever that came from. Um, so we get in the car I and mean, I, I figure, okay, so... Um, no one's going to stop a Rolls Royce for a DUI when there's all the Ferraris and stuff around. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> there was, we're about 30 miles outside of Stockholm and there's a rest area and there's a cop on the street there making every car that had stickers on it because the rallies, you have stickers, uh, pull in. And then they had other cops in the rest area giving the DUI checks. So pull in and go, shit, I'm going to jail. <laughs> it's because uh, I was driving. My co-pilot hadn't had anything to drink the night before, oh. but still. So uh, we get out, and then the, uh, the other cops were already checking out two cars in front of us, so they had their attention on them. Well, we're dressed alike, and well, I have to explain something. I had the TV crew from Gumball who was doing a documentary on us and other drivers there. We were already mic'd up, so we had our lavalier mics, and the cameraman was there in the car with us driving, and the cameraman along with the um, announcer, whatever. So we had four people in the roles, the two video people. So they hear you guys hatching this plan. Oh, no, 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 no. He's just wa They're just recording everything. Yeah. So I go to the side, and I, I talk to him. I said, we've got to switch places. He says, see, yeah. He says, they'll want to check you. <laughs> I said, yeah, of course they'll <laughs> want to check. So we actually, so he goes back, and uh, they didn't notice, because we were dressed alike anyway. They gave him the DUI check. <laughs> <laughs> they go, thank you. <laughs> they thank him very much. They had some suspicions, but nothing else came of it. Otherwise, I'd probably be in jail right now, not talking to you at this wow. event. And this was years ago. So this just an example of what can happen on Gumball. Any other crazy things? I mean, yeah. oh yeah. Is that is oh, what's the craziest thing when you, when I when you talk about a rally and just crazy stupid stuff that happens? What comes to mind? Okay, well, no, there's one more part of that one. Once we got over, they uh, flew the cars to um, Reno and flew us in a seven eighty seven party jet. Uh, one guy who was um, part of it, I can't think of the name, but they were like the um, jackass of Europe. <laughs> and he goes, this is all on video. This is on the 787. And he gets strips down totally naked and runs through the plane. And there's guys and girls on the plane. There's like a couple hundred people on the plane. Uh, not only that, people are smoking cigars, smoking cigarettes, some people smoking pot on the plane. Oh, geez. Uh, the uh, the stewardesses were all getting wasted with us. Oh, my God. The pilot comes out, and he's stuffing girls in the overhead compartment. I mean, this is a flight. <laughs> Holy Jeez. This is, doesn't go by FAA standards. <laughs> but yeah, at any rate. So he's running back and forth. And there's celebrities on the, I mean, he's, what a, and we've got Dolph Lundgren, you know, from uh, Rocky IV, yeah. you know, the Russian and other people. It was something. At any rate, so that was the plane flight. Then we get to Reno. And then from Reno, uh, also, we had another fellow that ended up getting a speeding ticket, uh, you know, Lewis Hamilton. <laughs> mm. 
Uh, well, that makes sense. Fastest yeah. driver in the world, F1. That makes sense. He is the yeah. biggest <laughs> champ. Yeah, so he's on the rally with us. Oh, my God. And wow. he gets a ticket out in the desert. So, I, I <laughs> wow. mean, it's a, and it goes on and on. Could you and imagine then, pulling over Lewis Hamilton? <laughs> he did. He pulled over Lewis <laughs> and Hamilton. And you're like, uh, should I be giving you this ticket? He probably didn't know who he was. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, he's pretty popular. <laughs> yeah, it's F1. That's true. Uh, yeah. It was, it was, wow. So are, the, are the rallies overseas... It sounds like they're much, much bigger than they are in the States. No, they're ever the gumball rally always sells out and it's always 120 cars. Okay. Always sells out. It, it's um, most car guys, especially the one to do rallies, they put it, it's their bucket list item. Sure. It's that big of a deal. But the other crazy one, the first one I did in Europe was London to Turkey. So I had, uh, that was, I think, 2011 or 12, somewhere like that. So I, I ship over, I had a Maserati. <laughs> um, whatever the sports model was, not the quadruport, but the, you know, um, ship it over, gets there and it's got electrical problems. So I finally get the car jumped, get it to the hotel. The next morning they take it, you know, they're bringing the cars that were parked there to Trafalgar square to fill up the whole area. Cause this is the start line of gumball and boy, that place was packed. So it gets over there and then they say, Oh, by the way, your car wouldn't start. We had to jump it. So I'm at the start line, parked with a dead battery. Oh, jeez. And I'm trying to figure out, uh, let's see here. How do you get the car started? I need a jump. In the middle of Trafalgar Square. A. They don't have AAA. In the middle right. of Trafalgar Square. Yeah, exactly. Oh, packed with people. They wouldn't yeah. allow cars in. So we had to figure out what's their AAA there. I finally, I forget what it was, but some guy with the uh, thing came in from whatever service and started me up. Just in time to get on the start line. I'm right behind a Bugatti on the start line. So we've got that, but already knowing we've got electrical issues. Okay, so then we drive, uh, get to the channel, you know, the train that goes under the water. And I, I warned him, I said, there's only one lane in there. And I warned the people, I said, I can't stop the car because if I do, the battery will die. He says, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of it. Okay, stop the car. And we get to the other side in France. And of course, it won't start. And they finally get. I'm hanging up all half the train. No one can get off because of me <laughs> I'm making friends. Uh, finally, they get a truck that starts me, get to France. Okay, we're in France, driving down, and then get to an area um, on the highway there where a cop pulls me over because I have no front license plate <laughs> and says, you need it on. I said, okay. So you go back to town that way, about 20 miles. No one's speaking much English. And have it put on. So I had to take it, take the car there, have someone drill into there to put the front license oh. plate on, and come back. And he's holding my passport and driver's license. Meanwhile, come uh. back and show my dentist. Okay, good. That, thank you. That'll be a thousand euros. Thank you very much. Oh. Wow. So I didn't like it. Get to uh, Paris, great party and all that stuff. It was wonderful. Then we get uh, car started the next morning. Then we get to Barcelona. Everything's fine. It was, uh, actually, we had a cop. Uh, I got lost getting into Barcelona. So a cop is speeding in front of me to follow me. And we're just hauling ass through the streets to get to the hotel in Barcelona. That was cool. <laughs> the next morning, okay, from Barcelona to Formula One, Monaco. Okay. Now, Gumball does the best of the best. So we're at the Fairmont Hotel, which is right on the hairpin turn. And I mean the seats, or the seats. You're at the hotel. You're in the pool area watching Formula One right in front of you. Wow. Oh. Great location. That was, you know, all the yachts out there. Perfect. Okay. So the next morning after Formula One, we're supposed to go to Venice. Okay. So, no, which isn't that far. I'm a couple, three hours, whatever, from, uh, from Monaco. Um, so my, of course, the car is having problems. I, I tried to take it to the Ferrari dealer during Formula One, but the mechanics were all out on the track. Mm -hmm. Uh, so um, I'm driving and I'm driving and I'm driving my, you know, nothing's working very well. I'm driving and hours are going by. I'm finally, I see a C store. I pull over where I realize I'm almost in Rome. Wrong direction. It was worse than that. It was <laughs> 200 miles away from Venice, which was only uh. supposed to be a short drive. So I asked a copy. So you have to go back that way about 200 miles to Bologna and then cut down to Venice. Okay. So now by this time, we should have been there two in the afternoon. By this time it was about eight or nine at night. Get to Bologna. It's about 11 or so. Um, at, uh, in the car starting and stopping, starting and stopping. We're in the toll booth. The, uh, and the car dies completely. 
Now, I've got this Maserati with California license plates wrapped in pink, purple, and green wrap <laughs> and tinted Jeez. windows. A cop comes over. It, it won't move. The car won't move. And someone, uh, whoever's uh, running the, the toll gate, whatever, said, you know, get the hell out of here in Italian. Cop comes over with a gun drawn because he didn't know what in the hell we were doing there, realizes what's happening. He spoke broken English, pushed the car out. Um, he calls a tow truck. Um, truck won't stop. Now the electrical is totally gone. So um, I had to abandon the Maserati. So we left it with him. Now, these only happen on Friday nights, this kind of crap. Of course. So he took us to the train station. We're supposed to be, uh, there's supposed to be trains running once an hour to get to Venice. And this is like 10 o'clock at night now. Well, he takes us to the train station, drops us off, and he's going to take the car to the dealer and monitor it from there because we need to finish the rally. So we get to the train station and the train stop running. Oh, by the way, while we're getting out with our bags and stuff at the train station, the street in front of the train station is filled with ladies of the night with no teeth, some of the weirdest things in the middle of the street hanging around soliciting. Oh my I'll leave it at that. Gosh. <laughs> Finally, we take a very expensive cab ride from Bologna to um, Venice. We arrive at... Two in the morning, Venice, we had to be up and be ready to go by six in the morning. A friend of mine in Venice that had a Rolls Royce had room for us in the morning. We found this out in the morning. So then we, uh, from there, we take, uh, we're lucky. Now we get to Serbia or somewhere, one of the countries there um, in a one-star hotel of all things. That's what they had us booked as. It was really weird. Uh, and in the morning, uh, the people with the Rolls Royce let me know that they can only take one because they had someone else joining him. So I let my co-pilot do it because I knew the people in Gumball and I figured I'd get your ride in the luggage truck. All right, so um, then, and I'm going, okay, this is going to be a challenge. Okay, uh, then also one of the Gumball staff said, well, there's, uh, found me and said there's a 458 Ferrari because I had one at home uh, that they wouldn't let the owners of it through because of their nationality, but the car is here. So I ended up driving that to Turkey. <laughs> I mean, this is Gumball. This is like... You don't know what's going to happen. It's the the it's real life. The craziest things will happen, and it's you just got to be. It, a, is that the main? The is that the main allure to doing the race? It's not just so much taking your car and driving it. Oh no, no no! This is a party. This is um, we've got. I mean our our DJs. Okay, with Dead Mouse is always on it, so he's always giving us a private party. You've got Afrojack. We've got mm -hmm. these other characters uh, that are there. And of course, David Hasselhoff is at the beginning of each one. Um, and it's uh, and he's big in Europe. I know that. Oh, he's huge. He's huge. Yeah. Germans Europe. love David they Hasselhoff. Love yeah. David <laughs> Hasselhoff. They do. That's an example of gumball. That's my favorite. And you really don't know what's going to happen. You have no idea. What's so what happened happen. to the Maserati? Oh, they uh, they fixed it. Uh, and then Maserati factory, which is probably about seventy miles away, kind of oversaw it, and then they shipped it back to me at home. Wow. So what an adventure. I, could, could I ask Steve? You you seem to be an aficionado of Italian exotic cars, obviously, right? Yeah. Uh, is that your thing? Like, do you have a McLaren, or do you have anything else, or you you like the Italians? I like the. Oh, I've I've had uh, Ferraris since I uh, started um, in '82. My first one was uh, 308. Okay. Ferrari, like, um, what's his name? The Hawaiian dude. Oh, Magnum. Uh, yeah, yeah, Magnum. Magnum. Magnum, right? Magnum Mobile, right? Yeah, that was the first yeah. one. Great-looking great car. And yeah. I've had, yeah, and I've had 10 Ferraris since then. Okay. One, one of them, um, 84, it was a 512 Boxer Ferrari. Mm -hmm. And nice. my wife and I were very, very good friends with George Barris and his wife. Okay. And so we do everything together. And he talked me into taking that Ferrari and customizing it. Mm. Oh, that doesn't happen too often, does it? <laughs> So well, what, let's <laughs> put it this way. He had he customized his 308 Ferrari to being all gold with lights flashing on and off. Yeah. Okay, well, we did this. He painted the car candy pearlescent ruby wine, which is not a Ferrari color, uh -huh. with these uh, wheels matching and lights and stuff going on and off. And the kicker was um, I had – there's a grill in front like about this. I had a button I pushed on that. The grill came up like this and had a Knight Rider light on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he Knight, did the Knight Rider. Yeah, Knight Rider, Rider yeah. Ferrari. So I had a Knight Rider. George, so I can't tell you how many people George and I pissed off when we do the Ferrari drives with all the oh, hardcore yeah, yeah, yeah. So No one liked us. Did yeah. George need to just spend a lot of time convincing you to do it to your Ferrari? 
Yeah, well, it was, I drew the line when he wanted to chop the top and make it a convertible. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't going to do that because they didn't make the Boxer 512 was not a convertible. Now, have you gotten the nasty gram or the or the nasty call from Ferrari HQ? Like, where you can't buy any more Ferraris, no, no. way. <laughs> no, they didn't do that back then. That was oh, okay. in the 80s. That was the uh, 80s. Oh, okay. So it was more yeah. the Wild West oh, back yeah. then. Okay. Yeah. Dead Mouse got it. Dead Mouse got the nasty uh, gram. Yeah. No, he, yeah. Well, I know, I know Leno's talked about that. Leno has a real good piece on Leno's Garage about why he doesn't have Ferraris and he he doesn't like their policy and so yeah. on. And well, it's interesting. just a lot to take yeah. in. You Are know? you into the customizations of your cars or just really more of just, you know, you just like driving the cars as is and... Well, I mean, I custom color-wise interior as far as sure. uh, decorating that out, but uh, I'm not... Uh, no, I'm, I'm beyond customizing. Sure. Yeah. So it, it's that, but I've had, uh, I mean... I've had ten Ferraris. Yeah, and that's and I I love Ferraris. I'm not a. I tried Lambos. They're gorgeous cars. Mm -hmm. They're beautiful cars, but they're just not comfortable. I guess for me at my age. Is it a? You know? Also, like, the Ferraris have a flair unlike other cars. Do you think that's something unique to the Ferraris that maybe you like more than like a Lambo or something like that? I think Lambos are much better looking in a lot of cases. Really, I love Lambo. Oh mm -hmm. no, Lambos are beautiful cars. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's. Uh, Oh yeah, the Aventadors, the uh, or whatever they're called. I, I don't follow it that much, but no. They, is they, the Ferrari more of a, a, a like you said, a comfort thing, or is it? There's what is it about the Ferraris that you really gravitate towards? The heritage, heritage. Okay. The heritage yeah. is part mm -hmm. of it, right there. Yeah, uh, they are more comfortable. Yeah, they're definitely comfortable for a rally. Mm -hmm. um, um, they've got. Uh, I mean, my God, you know the um, the warranty for five, seven years, whatever, and all service is taken care of. So it's not, so when you talk about how expensive it is to take care of a Ferrari, well, if you're getting a new one, it's, it's, there's no expense. Cause it's covered in the price. Oh mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I think their, uh, um, I think their warranty is in service contract maybe better than Lambo, but I haven't had a Lambo, so I can't be an expert at that. There's always, you know, the rumor that, you know, or the legend that the Ferraris are so unreliable and they're always fixing it or whatever. Is that true? Oh. Not at all. Yeah. I have no issue. I haven't had issues. My last three Ferraris, I've had zero issues. Nothing. I, mm -hmm. I mean, they're like bulletproof. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Yeah. What's your favorite Ferrari? The one I've got now, my 812. Yeah. Yeah. It's a nice one. Yeah. And do you look back fondly, the old days driving the older Ferraris? I mean, is there anything old versus new going through your head? Like, yeah, I'd like to go back, reminisce, and drive one of the old Ferraris again. I like the Boxer. That, that one... Even though it was only 400 horsepower, at the time I got it new, it was like, oh, my God, 400 horsepower. <laughs> Scare, I was scared of it. <laughs> and now they're like 800 horsepower and 1,000 and whatever yeah. or so. But, um, no, that that one I did like. And I also like, I had a 355 convertible, which is a beautiful car. And they sound amazing. Those oh. 355s oh, yeah. have a sound, a throaty. You heard a 355? I think all Ferraris have an amazing uh, sound. Which yeah, is if for I, sure. If I was in the market There's for something about a 355, exotic. though. Yeah. I think most Ferrari guys will say, I shouldn't say most, a lot of Ferrari guys will say the 355 really does. does have one of the nicest sounds. Mm. It's true. Yeah. yeah. CJ, we, we need to ask him about Craig's Ferrari. I want his opinion on Craig's oh, Ferrari. Oh, the FF. It's the FF. Have you ever owned an FF? No. Okay. Why? What? Um, because he is this The one. car <laughs> itself is an unbelievable car. I mean, it's a great car. I mean, you can take that down a ski slope with snow on it, and it'll, you know, I, I'm the things you can do with that car. I don't care for the design of it. Nah. <laughs> no, that's the only thing. Yeah. No, nothing, I said the, I said the same said thing. The same. We, we, we don't care for the design. A, I, a friend I, of the show bought one. Yeah, and I, it's a beautiful car. I agree, but I looked at it and I just kind of went, "There's something wrong about that. It's not a." And well, same I, thing. It's the design. It's 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 beautifully designed if you look at it yeah. objectively. Oh, it's a but great it, car. But if you look at it with other Ferraris, it's like. Oh, well, that's what something. I like about it. It's a different type of it Ferrari. Is. You it know, is. I do like the hatch. I do like the the way it's shaped, like the the shooting brake look yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a practical I, Ferrari. Yeah, practical. Which yeah, is, definitely. For sure. Saying practical in Ferrari. Yeah, that's what tough. I mean. Should yeah, yeah. a Ferrari be practical? Is yeah, that, I, I don't know. Is that, I don't know. You know. Well, I don't know. I wasn't about to say anything on the Sweden to gum uh, to Vegas one because. I'm running with Dolph Lundgren, and he's driving an FF. Oh. He has an FF. <laughs> so, yeah. 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 Anyway, so I didn't say anything okay. negative about it. Gotcha. Besides, he's um, stronger than me, and he's a better <laughs> fighter, I think. Yeah. I, I, get, I will meaner. destroy you. Whatever, oh, yeah. you, whatever you say, Dolph. Dolph, it's all good. <laughs> no, he's not. He's nice. nice so, yeah. Uh, Isn't he, like, highly educated, too? Very. Yeah, he's got, like, a PhD oh. or something. He's, oh, really? Yeah. 
He, he's one of those guys, if I'm not mistaken, he's one of those guys who has a reputation as being kind of a muscle head, you know, from his movie career, obviously. Oh, yeah. But but in real life, he's got like multiple degrees and stuff. He's yeah. like super smart. Oh, he's brilliant. Actually, that, that brings me to a question I want to ask you, Steve, is that doing all these events and being a car guy, you know, through and through, um, do you find that the majority or most or all of your friends are all car guys, car people? or Mostly. Yeah. Mostly, yeah. I mean, I mean or do you, spend, you, do you spend most of your time with car people? Uh, usually. Yeah. Usually. I mean, that's my life. I like putting on the events, like uh, especially the one coming up, the uh, Santa Barbara. I was about to, that was going to be the our biggest segue thing I've ever into, done. Yeah, yeah. Oh. It's, well, we want to hear about it. Yeah, I, I don't about know about that. the Santa Barbara. Well, this is Kevin's event. He's I mean, not this is talking about the expo. Oh, oh, Santa Barbara, oh, Expo. Santa Barbara okay. Auto Expo or yes. Santa Barbara County Auto Expo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I heard about it, I had to be involved, so I'm helping him organize it. Uh, but first of all, it's a charity event. I've never put on a charity event, so this is something new for me. And I've got um, – I'm fairly well known in the L.A. County area and Orange County, I guess, for putting on car events. So um, hopefully my influence can bring the L.A crowd over there because when he did it last i think it was a couple of years ago uh during covid yeah that was at the golf course i think it were was, you there yeah i was there at 400 cars and oh, seven thousand yeah. people during covid yeah, like I last mean, minute too God. it wasn't he had some issues going on setting it up right so he got, well, it was like he didn't have a lot of time to promote no, it well the problem oh. was they changed venue on him i think a month before and he pulled it off which yeah. was amazing and, and it turned really, out well he, he can do anything yeah, yeah. he yeah. can make anything happen so He's a good dude so oh yeah so I mean, that pulled up during COVID to have that many people. I, I just, I wasn't there. I just, I didn't see very many masks from, but we didn't. When yeah. once during COVID, once you started going north of LA County, not that many people were, yeah. but they, they're saying it was bullshit. The, the insanity went down as I you know. left LA County <laughs> for I mean, sure. Even, I, I, even I, up here, even in Ventura County, we were compared to LA. It was much oh. more chill up here. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then you get up. Uh, so I put on drives with uh, I, I had a driving group called Malibu Rat Pack and some other. And so we take drives up uh, Los Olivos and Santa Barbara, or whatever. We get to Los Olivos and we're looking. This is during the middle of COVID, and no one's wearing any masks. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I heard that. Oh, Just like the rest yeah. of the country, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, yeah. At any rate, so uh, back on this. So, um, I, I mean, he arranged to get our concourse. The cars on Sunday morning at Santa University of Santa Barbara, or University of California Santa Barbara, yeah. on their soccer fields on campus. Wow! Five soccer fields which hold a thousand cars. That's and amazing he, in itself. Knowing yeah. UCSB, that's amazing yeah. in itself. Well, oh, now Kevin is very well known in Santa yeah, Barbara. Yeah. He has a lot of followers and sure. people that love him. Yeah. And so, um, and then on his charity, he's got. Uh, I mean, the sheriffs, the highway patrol, mm -hmm. the local police all uh, are involved to some degrees. And then the county and the city behind them, uh, the TV stations. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like, this is a big deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, This is a big deal. And then uh, the way he's got it planned, so the day before, which is really going to be a lot of fun, is putting on a rally. Yeah. Now. This not is the same kind of rally we're talking. Not <laughs> yeah, a gumball yeah. rally, and not a stupid one. Do so, <laughs> Dolph, this, Dolph Lundgren won't be there. <laughs> yeah, no. This this is a real rally. It's one where you have to do things, and then yeah. you win trophies, prizes, whatever, by completing things. And it's um, sixty five cars. It's limited to, and they're going to be. And the route is through um, the mountains and the beaches. Beautiful scenery, but you have to do stuff. You have to do stuff. Yeah, so it's, it's a not real. A race. It's, it's a, a rally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, all these other things, the gold rush and gumball and cannonball, mm -hmm. whatever, even though they're called rallies, they're not really rallies. They're a, they're a party. Like you said, party yeah. on wheels. They're a party right? on wheels. Yeah, yeah. But this is a real rally. So, so this, this is the Scott and Monty show, right? No. No, it's not no, this some is, different. No, oh, that was Boys and Girls Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was, no, this is completely different. Different rally. Yeah, yeah. Different so, rally. So uh, Kevin is going to host um, a rally uh, before, the day before For the, the expo. Yes. Yeah. That's, that's on the Friday. It's tied to the expo. And then... Oh, yeah, definitely. This okay. is part of it. It's part of the charity. Got it. Got and it. then at night, it's a gala, a dinner, uh -huh. and it's going to be, the gala is going to be um, Al Capone style. It's like speakeasy. Oh, cool. So you have to have a certain knock on the door. And people <laughs> are going to be dressed like in zoot suits and very, Al Capone and very, all that. You need a password. You know, it, exactly. Yeah, the only no, way can get in is that's you part have a password. Of it. That's pretty cool. That's part of it. And yeah. it's you have 250 people. That's part of the chair. And there will, of course, be a live auction, but it'll be really, really cool. So this is Santa Barbara. And again, we have some, can't mention any names, but 
uh, our host of celebrities, you know, Grand Marshal, whatever, all of that stuff, and be totally uh, the the event covered by the TV station. They'll be uh, they're going to have the uh, placards on the buses there. So it's like it's a big deal. It's the biggest thing that Santa Barbara does. Very cool. His event. And I'm just proud to be a co-organizer, but he's like the chief. He's the, bra- he's the brains, you know. No, yeah. So uh, that's um, that's August 10th and 11th, and it's um, it's amazing. So that's um, any kind of time to ride around the Pebble Beach. And the guy, the, uh, the is, is this the week? This is is this the week before Pebble? Yes, this is the first stop okay. on the way to Pebble. That's what I thought. It's the yeah. first stop. It's on. Okay, so here's how it works. So on this weekend, this is our weekend, and then people actually start driving up to uh, Pebble on that Monday, but not the, but most of the spectators leave on Wednesday or Thursday. But so other people that are taking their cars up, they'll leave Monday and Tuesday and maybe Wednesday. And there's some parties that happen. The big part of Pebble happens at the end of the week. Right. You know, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday, which is the concourse to elegance there. But it's a nice timing between oh, the yeah. two yeah. It's between perfect. the two events. And yeah. it's on it's on the way. And you know, yeah. get special rates uh for some of the hotels because of us. Sure. Uh and it uh and obviously the weather's great at that time. Oh yeah. You know, the drive up there will be beautiful. Oh, yeah. Beautiful, yeah. 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 We we got a Steve. Steve, have you been to the quail? Mm-hmm. Well tell us about the quail. I'm I'm intrigued by the quail. It's just another car show with some amazing cars on it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm intrigued because uh, you, well, I don't know what it costs now. Usually it's about $1,000 a person to get in, but you get all the free caviar you want to eat. Well, there you go. You could make that for $1, up. For yeah, $1,000. How much caviar yeah. could you eat, though? You, you could and make the, that up. And, yeah. And the, well, the food and the drinks. Are, <laughs> if know, it's the right it's caviar, all, just it's all free. You know, a couple times. It's all there. free. Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, and the cars that are in it, too, are invited. I mean, you, oh, yeah. you, know, you, you have to apply, just, you get, yeah. It's not a Cars and Coffee. It's, yeah, it's, it's a, a real, real show. <laughs> <laughs> it's a real show. They're amazing. You've got the sponsors and a lot of the, uh, the people like uh, Lamborghini may introduce a new model. People are introducing new models at yeah. that event. That's what I think is intriguing about it. it is is. We've yeah. seen some premieres that are like, whoa, look at this thing. This yeah. is amazing. Yeah. Oh, these events. I mean, you deck, you know, get dressed and decked out, decked mm-hmm. out. You go, even when you do the Pebble Beach Concourse event, it's the kind of thing where the ladies would wear the big hats and mm-hmm. it'd be very... Yeah. Um, Kentucky Derby style. Exactly. Exactly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That that uh, that's just amazing up there. That's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. All you, right. I want to travel in his circles. Yeah, you, I was about you, to say. Do you need a personal valet, Steve, or anything? I mean, I, <laughs> let, let me know because uh, I want to come hang with Steve at some yeah. of these things. I think he right? drives his own cars. I don't think he wants a valet. <laughs> I do drive. I, I can load his luggage and stuff. Yeah. Right? Do you have a thing against valet for what they did for you in Malibu? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I I mean I start I used to be a valet. I was in the '60s. You know I didn't have a job. I got a job parking cars at the Continental Hotel on Sunset Boulevard, and there it was just go. like Ferris Bueller. The fancy cars would come and had to park them. And yeah, I took them out for a little drive. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I, I, Ferris Bueller in real life. That's I fun. Love it. Yeah, I'm not Ferris. I wasn't well, not Ferris. Ferris I was the idiot. You, you were the guys. Those those sketchy looking guys. I was right? that guy. <laughs> we'll take care of your car. No oh, yeah. yeah. Relax. Oh, but at least, you know, once, Relax. once in a while, it. I got a 50 cent tip. And so that was pretty uh-huh. good. Hey. We're talking the 60s. Did now, you ever park Sinatra's car? No. Okay. Any rat packers? Never did that, but uh, we did. Uh, and we were hanging out with the, well, it was the 60s. We were hanging out with all the top legendary rock groups, but yeah. they were just friends at the time. I mean, the yeah. door, the Doors, for example, were that was the house band at my friend's little after hours club. Wow. And they'd be yes. playing Light My Fire all night long wow. and shut the <laughs> up already, you know. But yeah, but this is, that was our. Uh, wow. Yeah. So I, I'm a failed rock star. I, See, we got to so dig I, these stories uh, out. Steve yeah. just has a wealth of like. Oh, there's uh, more. I, there's there's just so much good stuff. Well, we're going to have to well, have you back on the show, but also oh. check out um, the, the Zuma Cars and Coffee at yeah. Redondo, oh. right? Two, do, well, do uh, it'll be too late on that, but it's 245. Uh, Harbor, I think it's North Harbor, and it's actually in the huge parking lot there at the ocean. So, is that right where the uh, the booze cruise ships leave from? The booze? No, in I marina? don't. In marina? I don't know. It's at the marina because I've, I've I'm pretty sure I've parked in that lot because oh. we've done actual shoots for this charity on one of the big booze cruise boats there, and it's right next to Killer Shrimp. So I oh I know, no no I that's Marina that. Del Rey. Yeah, Killer Marina Shrimp. Del Rey. Right. Oh no, this is Redondo, Redondo Beach. Yeah. Oh well, Z- so you were at Marina, but oh, now yeah. it's Redondo. Yes. Right? Yeah, the okay. city of San, uh, the city of Zuma Beach 
is now located in Redondo Beach. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Okay. The Zuma Annex. You've, you've had a southward migration of the organization. And I right? can't change the name. You know, uh, and people you should. It, it works. That's your, it that's works. Your I, I like Zuma. It's cool. Yeah. Well, it seems to me that every location seems to have like a, like the Ventura one, there's a certain group that is knows Ventura. So if the Ventura Cosmic Coffee had to move to Oxnard, it still would be the Ventura because the group of people that, the yeah. regulars. Yeah, right? well, for Ventura sure. County in Oxnard. Exactly. So that's yeah. Yeah, exactly. For sure. But, you know, Zuma is that you have a certain type of crowd that is well behaved, you know, and you want wherever that group goes, it should be that's the coin term. So, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I like it. Yeah, I, true, I say so. keep it. Well, that's my vote. Yeah. yeah. So, I just don't want Zuma to move to Tijuana. <laughs> I, but I mean, I keep fighting. That's with the Zuma riots again. Yeah. I mean, it was like uh, one thing we don't give up. We've had like four or five, whatever locations. And uh, and people get oh disappointed and they say but we we've always come through so far. You're definitely the most yeah. most resilient no doubt. cars and coffee. No doubt. That's true. That I have to agree <laughs> with. Uh, I, I would go to that cars and coffee. You know me, Gabe. I'm not a huge cars and coffee guy. I would go to that just because I want to see all the exotics. That'd be fun. Sure. That'd oh, be they're, cool. they're fun and the people are great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. Yeah. People who own those kinds of cars are definitely entertaining and a, and a breed uh, apart. I would say a little bit. Entertaining, yeah, that's a good word for it. That works. I'm being diplomatic. I have a question. Here. I'm sure this is a big topic for cars and coffee. How do you get guys to behave at your cars and coffee? Um, guys are because they're pe these are people that repeatedly come, so it's almost like a huge family. Mm -hmm. And uh, the people that are there will not put up with someone that's being an asshat. Mm -hmm. uh, but we've had uh, very little. Like when we were in Marina del Rey. Once in a while, someone would burn out, but it was no big deal. Um, one time, in fact, I got on a video, someone burned out, and there was a, a sheriff in our lot, and he took off after him. But uh, we've had really no issues. Um, kind of self-policing. Yeah. yeah they, oh, yeah, good. very self-policing. Yeah. The other one, the other event that was uh, at uh, Pacific Palisades was known for having burnout people. So they had crazy craziness all yeah. over. Mm. Mm. It, it was really weird. But no. Our group is just very, um, they want to see, we, this is the last great place that we could do, in, in fairly close to the ocean. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know of any other places that we could put on a Cars and Coffee, so we lose this thing. And um, Redondo Beach is beautiful. It's beautiful. I, I did a documentary on uh, the outrigger paddling with the club there and everything, so I hung there a lot at King Harbor and everything. Right. And it's, it's beautiful down there. That's really where we pretty. are, right next to King Harbor, yeah. Redondo. I, I know where yeah. you're at. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. It's a nice area. Well, oh. we're going to have to go check that. It's the first Sunday of The first month? Sunday of every month. This time, this uh, this is not the first Sunday we're doing it. It's our first event, mm -hmm. but it's been almost two months since we've had one, so I had to put something on. Sure. So we're going to do this one, and then our plan, and we'll announce it um, on our Instagram, which is uh, my plug, Zuma Cars and Coffee. Mm -hmm. or cars go. and Coffee. It's very easy to find. Uh and it tells everything about us. But the, um, we had to, yeah, so it'll be, so the next one we're hoping to be August, the first uh, week in August. Okay. I think wait, wait, we've got June, July, yeah, the first Sunday in August, and hopefully the first Sunday of every time. But it'll all be announced on that uh Cool. On the site. Yeah, yeah, we'll check that out. Sounds yeah. interesting. Yeah. August, August is going to be busy for you. You're going to have that, and then you're going to have Kevin's thing. That's right. And then you got to go up to Pebble. Yeah. So you're not even, you're going to. Oh, I may be a lead. That to me, you may, we'll be home for a I, I'm I think I'm supposed to, again, I usually lead the Gumball round, the Gumball 3000 drive from LA up there. So okay. with the people that join us all get stickers on their cars or whatever. Oh, but uh, yeah, and then you have uh, the parties, then you have the Gumball party up there, which is a whole other. I bet. <laughs> the story's on that too. So, wow. I, you know, not today. <laughs> yeah. All right. But. Steve, thank you so much for joining us this morning. You're welcome. And we appreciate it. And we'll have a part two because we know you have many more stories. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'll try. I'll make some up. Yeah. If I don't and we'll see you at the car shows. <laughs> yeah. We'll come visit you at, the, at Zuma. Yeah. Do. Redondo. Zuma. Redondo. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Redondo. Zuma. And we'll definitely, right. we'll definitely see you at uh, the Santa Barbara Auto Expo. Yeah. We'll sure. see you there. We'll oh, yeah. Down. Definitely. Cool. All right. So don't forget to like, follow, subscribe. We have our YouTube channel. Thank you very much. And you can contact us through our tip line slash storyline. So if you want to join us here in studio, if you have a great story, you think these idiots aren't talking about the right thing, let us know. Tell us what you want go, to hear. Yeah, go to the website, westatulsa.com, click on the tip line page, which you're probably going to change it to storyline page, right, Dan? That works for me. Yep. And uh, contact us. Otherwise, we will see you west of Tulsa. <laughs>